What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video I want to talk about using variables with Python. Alright, in the last video I showed you how to clear the screen programmatically and talked a little bit about comments. In this video I want to talk about variables, one of the fundamental building blocks of all computer programming and uh, very, very useful something you'll use forever. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Basically, it just covers my uh, video hosting bandwidth, right? So <laughs> that's how that goes. Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about variables. And a variable is, like I said, one of the most fundamental building blocks of programming. A variable is like a bucket. It's a container. It holds things. Generally, it holds one thing at a time. And when you put something into a variable, you put something into the bucket, you can use it later on. You can take it out. You can show it. You can do stuff to it. You can change it over time. You can delete it. It's just one of the very, very fundamental building blocks of all computer programming. And variables are pretty easy. With Python, they're very easy. You just call it. So I'm going to create a variable called full name. And I want to set that equal to John Elder. So this is our variable. We have assigned it using an assignment operator. We'll talk about those later. We've assigned the string John Elder. Now, a string is a data type. It's a type of data. Strings are basically words, text, right? There's lots of different data types. We'll talk about all the different data types later on. Think numbers, letters. Those are data types. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. So we have put this data, this string, into this variable full name. Now, to access this variable anytime we want, say we want to print it to the screen, we can just print out full and notice as I start to type our text editor already knows what it is so we can click on it or hit tab and it'll fill it in for us. So if we save this and come back here and run it again, it says boom John Elder. It's printed out our variable. So very cool. Now a couple of things you want to know about variables. Look how I named this. I wanted to put a full name into my variable. So I named the variable full name. If I just wanted to do like say John, right? That's a first name. I probably would have named it first name, right? So when you're naming your variables, you want to be as descriptive as possible and try and like understand what you're going to use that variable for and use that to name it. So it's just easier to read your code later on. I mean, you could name this anything you want. You could name this, you know, F767. That's not a good variable name. I don't know what that means, right? Um, on, but on the other hand, first underscore name, I definitely know what that is. It's going to be first names, right? So keep that in mind. The next thing I want to show you is look at this little underscore. So we have two words here, first and name. And you want to separate them with an underscore. You don't have to. You could do it like this, first name. But that's harder to read, right? So the convention is to separate letter or separate words with an underscore. Now, don't do like first and then a space name equals John. This is invalid. You'll get an error. So your variable name has to be connected, right? So another popular thing to do is use camel case. And that is I've capitalized the second word, right? And they call it camel case because, you know, camels have humps on their back. And by capitalizing the second word, it looks kind of like a hump. I don't know. I like JavaScript uses this convention. Python really doesn't. So uh, I recommend not doing that. You know, you can. It's valid. It'll work. Just like first name, all one, le all one word will work. But it's just not the convention. And you want to follow the conventions for your programming language. You know, other people might look at your code in the future. They're gonna know, they're gonna be used to seeing underscores. If you're not using underscores, it's gonna look weird and it's gonna be harder to read and it's gonna be harder for them to understand your code. Therefore, so uh, underscores are good. Uh, next, I want to talk about case sensitivity. So uppercase and lowercase. So for instance, first underscore name equals Bob. 
these are two very different variables, right? These are two different variables. They're not the same variable. So case sensitivity is important. They have to have the same case. So this one is lowercase, this one is uppercase. These are two different variables. I don't recommend you ever do anything like this because it's just confusing, right? So always, um, always stay consistent with your naming. Uh, that, that uppercase one was valid, it will work, but it's just not the convention to do that with Python. So what else? I mentioned you can put stuff in, you can take stuff out, you can change things over time. So here we have, let's put this up here, we've got a first name and let's change this to first name. Now we can change this, we can go first underscore name equals Bob. And I'm just going to copy this, and paste it in. So if we save this and run it, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it first prints out John and then it prints out Bob. How come? Well, because the first time our variable was John, we printed that out to the screen. Then we changed it to Bob and we printed it out again. So it's Bob. John no longer exists. We've deleted it. We've overwritten it. And uh, from now on, first name is going to be Bob until we change it again or whatever. So Python programs, if you didn't haven't figured it out already, they, it starts at the top and the very first line gets executed. Here it's a comment. Then the next line gets executed. Then the next line. Then the next line. Then the next line. And so as you go down, as you change things going down, Python will execute the latest line and print out Bob instead of John. So some some programming languages will read the entire file and then run. That's not the case with Python. It starts at the top and goes line by line all the way down. Program flow, they call it. And uh, so, yeah, that's that. So let's see, what else is important about variables? We can, like I said, you can delete things. If we went like this, first name, nothing. If we save this and run it, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it prints out John the first time, and then the second time it just prints out nothing because we've deleted John and we'd, uh, we've assigned nothing into our variable. Very cool. What else? I think that's about it. Variables are very easy, very simple to understand. They're a container. They hold things. You could put all kinds of stuff in. You could put numbers. You could put text. You can put other variables. <laughs> you know, so um, we can go, uh, let's say, last underscore name equals elder. And then we want to call first name equals last name. Let's get rid of this. So what do you think is going to happen this time? We have two variables, last name and first name. Last name is elder, but first name is last name. So we're assigning this into this and then assigning this into this. So it should print out elder, right? Let's see, boom, elder. So you can put text in there, you can put numbers in there, you can put other variables in there, you can put arrays in there. We haven't talked about arrays yet, we will pretty soon. You can put all kinds of objects in there. We'll talk about what an object is later on. You can put really just about anything you can think of in a variable and uh, you're gonna use them always, just always. Like every program you ever create will have many, many, many variables. They're just the fundamental building block of all computer programming. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.